vitamins and minerals. Uh, so vitamins are things that your body can generate if you eat the like the proper compounds that you can get in like food, um, vegetables and uh, meats, different food groups, things like that. Whereas minerals are things that you're going to ingest as they are, and then you 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 pass them as they are. So you don't really your body doesn't produce them; it just uses them for some processes. Um, and the reason I bring this up is because the next page, it has a table. The first table is of uh, important vitamins. So there are 13 essential vitamins, which means that your body can't just make the vitamins on its own. You need to eat the right foods and uh, the right foods in order to like, build those vitamins. Um, and so a lot of these, uh, especially like vitamin B12, I get a lot of questions about vitamin C. Um, people ask if they are taking in enough of uh, these vitamins. And so I wanted to include like some of the foods that you can get them in. Um, and then two vitamins that I wanted to bring up, B12 and C. Um, for vitamin B12, as people get over the age of 50, they have difficulty absorbing vitamin B12. So um, for that one, if you have concerns that you might be low, um, it's a level that we can check, and it's um, something that I often have to prescribe for patients because they are getting low. Same with vitamin C. Um, it's something that's often low in the Midwestern, um, the Midwest, just because as we get into the winter months, there's less sunlight out, um, so you're not spending as much time out in the sun, and uh, we need the sunlight to, to produce vitamin C. So those are the two that I usually run into that are low. Um, in my patient population and in this area. The other ones we usually get from a lot of our, our diet. And so when you are eating your meals, you wanna make sure that it's a very colorful plate, that you're eating a lot of like uh, dark leafy green vegetables, you're eating uh, like carrots, uh, red beans, like tomatoes, bell peppers, things like that. Um, you wanna have a lot of natural color on your plate. Uh, and then I've also listed daily intake. Um, I will, if a patient comes to me and they say, like, I want to start taking this vitamin, how much should I, like, how much should I be getting a day? Um, I put the measurements or the amount that you should get. Um, and if there's any difference between age groups, if there's any differences between men and women. So there's that table. Um, and then the next table are some important minerals, like calcium, folate, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. So um, same thing with this some foods that you can find those minerals in, how much um, men versus women need each day. Um, and if you have any concerns that you might be low in any of these or in the vitamins, um, you can always ask your doctor to run a blood test, uh, one poke, and then they'll get those results back and they'll figure out if you do need um, like any of the vitamins or any of the minerals, if you need to, to supplement or to get an extra tablet. Um, and then on the next page, if a table is not uh, your thing, there's a colorful infographic. Um, but of course, they're the same kind of information. Just wanted to make sure that there were different. Yeah. Um, and then Tony from the color printing. Um, but I wanted to make sure there are different modalities for you to look at. So, um, herbal supplements. Um, do you, so things like St. John's Wort, Ginkgo biloba, ginseng, echinacea, and then one I um, recently was brought up in my vacation is black cohosh. So then um, when you're in the store, when you're in the store um, and you are in the pharmacy section, you see these, and like Tony said, you see the commercials on TV, you are, maybe you're getting emails, maybe you're hearing this from other people saying like, oh, I'm taking black cohosh and I feel amazing. You're wondering, is this something that I need to take? Um, so the short answer is no, not really. Research hasn't really shown any consistent benefit. And kind of like I alluded to before, um, taking these can affect how your body breaks down other medications. So the concentrations in your blood can go up or they can go down, um, which is uh, dangerous. So for St. John's wort, especially, um, things like if you're taking any kind of antidepressant or conductor anxiety, like an SSRI, it can increase the level of serotonin in your blood. Um, and if you've done like a little bit of reading about the medication, you're thinking, well, that's good. It sounds like I am depressed or I have anxiety because I have low serotonin. So more serotonin is good, but no, it's, it's not. Too much of anything is a bad thing. 
Um, and so taking something like St. John's wort with like Plexico or Soloft or any medications like that, it can actually lead to a, a, a dangerous condition called serotonin syndrome, which is something that you would need to be hospitalized for. So too much serotonin is a bad thing. Um, and so that's why when you go to the doctor, they ask you like, what medications you're taking. Are you taking any vitamins or supplements? Are you taking any herbal supplements? Like they ask you that question in multiple ways, um, just to make sure that they're not missing anything. Briefly, yeah. what is serotonin syndrome? So I knew someone was going to ask you this. And then, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's extremely high blood pressure. You get flushing in your face, um, and you can have like spikes in your temperature. You can have like a rigid muscles. Um, yeah, like so. One when the the symptoms develop, people usually go to the doctor because um, like it's not a comfortable syndrome to experience. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. from the serotonin rush. Yeah. Yeah. All the things mm -hmm. that. that yeah. Kind of yeah, and so because we get really high blood pressures, like I, I recently treated someone who we thought had um, serotonin syndrome, and so like the blood pressures were like 190s over 100. He was getting really bad headaches. Um, when you saw him, he would be fine one minute, and then he would be very, very red the next, um, and he was just extremely uncomfortable. So yeah, things like this is why we warn people against against taking things like St. John's wort. Why we ask you different ways, what else are you taking? Is there anything else that's not food that you're taking daily to like help with your joints or to help feel better? Um, so that we can like prevent something like that from happening. Does that answer your question? So um, and then um, when we prescribe medications or we tell you to take this over the counter um, uh, like tablet or pill, when we we weigh the benefits and the risks, and we discuss that with you. So with everything you put in your mouth, there is a benefit and a risk. And so for these herbal supplements, there isn't really much of a benefit, and there's very much risk involved. Like the more medications you take. So um, if you have any questions about it, if you're thinking like maybe I should take this, you can always bring it up with your doctor. If you're in a store, you can always go to the pharmacy counter. Um, if that's where you fill your farm, your your prescriptions, then they'll have your list of medications, and they'll be able to advise you. Um, but yeah, ask your doctor or ask the pharmacist. So after all of this information, do I need to worry? Do you need to worry about buying supplements? Um, so uh, if you think that you're low in the vitamin, or you think you're low in a mineral, you can go to your doctor. You can tell them the symptoms that you're experiencing, the reason that you think that you're low. Um, sometimes those symptoms will kind of lead us one way or another. Um, like if you're saying that you're feeling really tired and you're always really cold and um, uh, yeah, things like that, then we might think that maybe your iron's low. So we'll, we'll, it'll give us an idea of what labs we need to check so that we can check and see if you are low in anything. Um, so, uh, and then um, another point that I wanted to bring up uh, I get a lot of patients that are asking, like, I saw this ad on the TV, and so I'm wondering if I need to take that. And it's not, that is not something that happens in other countries. They don't, I mean, it's starting to happen now that um, industrialization, is, industrialization is happening, and um, there's a lot of talking between the countries and different cultures. But before, these uh, pharmaceutical companies didn't really advertise to the patients. They advertised to the doctors and the pharmacies. And then, um, because there were um, interprofessional teams, um, like if uh, so, at our residency program, we have a pharmacist. So I often have the pharmacist reaching out to me and saying, and I was reviewing this patient's chart, and I think that you should um, like look into starting this medication for them. So, and that's how patients, um, that's how medication changes were made. So if the pharmacist would suggest that, or the doctor would learn about some medication. You bring it up to you at your next appointment to see if it's something that you're interested in, and then you make the change. So it's um, it's odd that pharmaceutical companies are are targeting you. You don't know like how medications work, and then it's not really your your job to go read those school. Um, but knowing that, knowing that other countries didn't do it this way before, and people were being treated well, um, you you can just ignore all of those ads. You can mute the TV. You can go do something else. You don't have to worry that you're missing some information um, because. And then if you do have 
in the classroom, and I was going to ask the doctor. Um, I'm just going to share a personal story. She talked about, um, you know, ask your doctor, ask your pharmacist. I just went to my eye doctor on Monday, and I take something called lutein, which is a supplement for eye health. And having worked in, in this field for 30 plus years, the pharmacist I worked with said, you don't need to take that. That's a waste of money. And the eye doctor saying, yes, you should take it because it contributes to your eye health. So now you have two different professionals, two different disciplines at odds with one another. But my eye doctor said, go ahead and take the lutein, but you don't need a high dose, just take six milligrams. So I was taking six milligrams for the longest time. Now when I go to the store to try and buy it or order it online, six milligrams is no longer available. There's only 20 milligram tablets available. There's a significant price difference. So these vitamin companies eliminate the lower doses, only make available the higher doses at a higher cost. Do I take this? Can I afford it? Is it? But my last eye exam on Monday, she's like, your, your vision is great. No cataracts, no glaucoma, you know, no macular degeneration. Your, your eyes are very healthy. Is this something that is contributing? So again, these are personal things that you need to think about on your own. And that's just one example of how you have two different disciplines. Yet on the other side, I have this vitamin company that's eliminated something that was very affordable for me. Now they've jacked up the milligrams and jacked up the price. So an interesting personal story that I think very relevant to share in, in this type of situation. Um, yeah, and so to your point where your eye doctor said that you only really need to be like the six, six, right. six milligrams. Um, one thing that my attending says is that if people ask, uh, do I need to take vitamins or supplements or vitamins or minerals? Um, and what they realize and what they want to take something, you, she just suggests um, that they take the multivitamin. And so there are different ones for different age groups. Um, you can always ask the pharmacist if you're not sure which one you should take. Um, but taking anything extra, it may just be uh, like making a splash of urine. Yeah. <laughs> right, you're peeing away money. Yeah. All right, money you could spend somewhere else. <laughs> Very true. The final point, ask your doctor, um, ask your pharmacist. That's what we're here for. I have a lot of patients who are like, I'm sorry, it's just one more question. I'm like, don't apologize. It's your health and this is what you're coming here for. Um, I'm happy that you have questions because it means that you're getting information. Maybe I could point you like a uh, different source, but you're, you're getting information and you're like, you're looking for it. So don't ever apologize for that. So ask the doctor, ask the pharmacist, um, and then uh, don't listen to the ad companies. They don't. They don't care about you. They're just trying to sell a product. Well, I was, I was going to ask you about the subject. If the the memory increasing drugs that they advertise on TV, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, yeah, you're getting paid for this. You're not. You're, you just you don't have memory problems at all. You're just fine. You memorize the script. You know, <laughs> but anyway, so. Is there anything to it? So no, um, supplements that improve your your memory. No. Yeah. Okay. Then consistent, or the research doesn't show consistent positive uh, or probiotics. The thing with probiotics is when you buy it over the counter, you're never sure like the uh, what exactly is in the bottle. Yeah. Um, so. I was. And um, so there's there's been times that um, I, there was there was a time not too long ago when uh, I wrote down um, uh, different supplements that I took, mm -hmm. and it was on like an intake form, mm -hmm. and said so why did you take it, and I said because my wife said so, and, but otherwise I didn't I didn't know if, I don't know if it does any good or if we're just spending bundles of money every month for nothing. Yeah. So that's a great question to ask your doctor. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah if they if they have any um so ask your doctor they can always run some lab tests to see if you are 
enroll in anything. Um, if not, they can uh, uh, they can always run labs after you stop taking those um, like uh, those uh, tablets or pills to see if you're low once you stop taking it. And then if not, then you know that you're not low and you don't need it. You know, the other thing about things like St. John's work and ginseng, all they have to do is put in a certain percentage of that particular um, mineral or you know plant based and then the rest can be filler so you uh, and, and the other thing that I'm sitting here or standing here listening to her if you if you go to um, you know one of the stores that or just order or sell supplements there's rosebud there's this there's that but if they're all so good, why aren't they into one multivitamin, you know, one pill like right. a multivitamin that gets you, you know, in all these different areas? So, again, each person is responsible for making informed decisions and, and what they can afford and, and does it work for you. And what works for me may, may not necessarily work for her and vice versa. So, don't, don't give in to a friend saying, well, I tried this and it worked really well. And, there might be some benefit. Yes, ma'am. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You had a question? Um, what's a good online resource to read about vitamins and So there is one governing body out there. It is called consumer. Had it earlier. What's that? Not well. It's the CDC endorses this company. Okay. It's not the CDC or the FDA. It is they endorse this company. It's called Consumer Nutritional Association or something like that. Don't hold me to that. But there is one out there that looks at all the vitamin companies and that and and kind of. It's almost like a consumer report type thing. So they're, that's about the best way to describe it. But you will see on the back of some of those supplement bottles that it says endorsed by and things. I'm not endorsing this one, but like Nature Made and other ones have that little symbol on the bottom. So you can go to that website and see that it tends to be the police of things like this. Are there certain brands that are more trustworthy than others? That's exactly what we're talking about to, to go to this site because we can't stand here and say, you know. Well, I didn't mean specific brands, right. meant like Costco. Right. And big brands. Mm -hmm. The thing about Costco is you're getting a lot of pills for a good price, but after trying, after buying that bottle for a week or so, and it doesn't agree with you because of the coating, or it doesn't agree with you because it's too much, it's more than you anticipated. Now you're stuck with that bottle and what you paid for it, and you still have six months supply. Yeah. Um, I always encourage somebody if they're going to try something, try the smaller bottles, you know, and and go from there. So that more and cheaper isn't always better because I cannot tolerate pills that have the red coating, the red dye on some of those different. I can't do that. So I have to be very careful if I do take something that I do some personal research. Well, that's Consumer Reports, but there's an actual company out there that they're they're endorsed by the FDA. Um, to, uh, yeah, I apologize. It, the word escapes me, and it used to be on one of our other handouts, and I have Yeah, well, that's one of them. It's endorsed by them as well. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get that information to Danielle. So, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Appreciate your time. Let's I'm just going to go ahead and stop our recording.